Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, commuter between this world of the mundane and the other world of the macabre. Although, frankly, I find it harder and harder to tell them apart. We look at oil, that surging, volatile liquid which fires the machinery of our complex civilization. We look at it with increasing anxiety because we know that sooner or later it must run out. And then what? Well, it isn't exactly a new situation. There was a time in the past when the human race had almost used up practically all the oil there was. Our mystery drama, The Lamps of the Devil, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Christopher Tabori. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Luden's Medicated Cough Drops. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It happens after every war. The boys come back to another world, a different world, a world that has in many ways passed them by, and they see the world divided into two camps, those who went away and fought and those who stayed home and got rich. In 1865, the long and bloody Civil War was over, and Lieutenant Noah Arkwright, who served with distinction in the United States Navy, came home to a seaport town in Massachusetts. Noah! Yes, it's Noah. You're Noah. Home from the war. Not a hole, not a scratch, fit as a fiddle, Spry as a coat. And where's my kiss? No, no. Where's my hero's welcome? See my medal? This ain't just a hunk of tin hanging by a rag. No, ma'am. This was personally pinned on my broad chest by Admiral Farragut himself, the commander-in-chief. Oh, Noah. Oh, that's right, my darling. My name is Noah, and your name is Prudence. And we must go inside your father's house where you may sit yourself down from the shock of seeing your beloved... Oh, Prudence. Prudence, you're prettier than ever. Noah, you never wrote. What was there to write? Except I love you. And you already knew that. Let's have a small wedding. Noah, listen. And you will sail with me. Here's one whaling captain that's going to take his wife on all his voyages. Noah, listen. I, I'm a married woman. The captain's cabin shall be more than just... You're what? I'm a married woman, Noah. You never wrote. How was I to know if you were alive or dead? You were gone four years. Noah. Night after night, at sea, in the darkness. I was never alone. You were always with me. Oh, please, Noah. Please, Noah, what? I, I'm sorry. You're sorry? You have to understand. Time passes. People change. Uh, Prue, I, uh, I thought I heard voices in here. Who is this? Oh, I, 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 I George, I, I would like to present an old friend, Lieutenant Noah Arkwright. Noah, my husband, George. This, this fish eye. Noah. This, this is your husband. You threw me over for this pot. I, I warn you, sir. Oh, I bet he's rich. Please, Noah, I know how you feel. No, Mrs. Married Lady Prudence. You do not know how I feel. Sir, I must ask you to leave this house. In what outfit did you serve our country, Mr. Husband? George served our country on the home front. Oh, at no loss to himself, I'll wager. Shall you leave, sir, or shall I throw you out? Are you giving me a choice? Please, please, Noah. Throw me out, Prudence. We shall have to send for the sheriff. And let me give you some good reasons to send for the sheriff. No! Oh, there's one! No. And there's another! No! Noah, this won't change anything. He's all yours. Oh, Noah, I heard you were back. Mr. Fallowfield, I just seen the Betty Lee. She's going to ruin. Uh, I know. She's just, what, just rotting away in the harbor. I know. She ain't put to sea in over five years. She has to be refitted. Refitted? And do I have plans? 
Ever since you told me I would be her skipper. Oh, I know every timber in her body, every spar, every brace. Here's what I think we should do. You know, uh, I ain't never gonna refit to Betty Lee. What are you saying, Mr. Fallowfield? Well, I'm saying it don't pay. Oh, but if you buy a new ship, you don't know what you're getting. Whereas with the Betty Lee, you see. Well, it don't pay to refit to Betty Lee. The reason is because I ain't no longer in the whale oil business. You're not in the... What do you mean you're not in the whale oil business? Why? Because yeah, that don't pay neither. You, Jonathan Fallowfield, you're not sending out the whale ships anymore. Son, it's over. Over? What do you mean over? How can it be over? What are folks going to do for oil, for candles, for lamps? Well, this new stuff's cheaper. This, uh... Petroleum. Oh, no. It's filthy. It's dirty. It's only fit to light the lamps of the devil. And it's come at just the right time. You see, the whales are practically give out. No. I can take it to where there are thousands of whales. Oh, there are no thousands of whales nowhere. Not anymore. You hunt any animal long enough, hard enough, the way we did. One day, you wake up. And you see, they've been hunted out. Hey, we'd have been in trouble, son, but uh, they come across this petroleum. Oh, I tell you, it won't work. Well, it's what folks are going to use for oil. Never. Uh, guess it's hard for you, son. You've been through a war and all. Now you come home, find it just ain't the same home you left. You promised me the Betty Lee. Well, there she is No, lying on the beach. You want her? Take her. I will. But first, ask yourself, where you get the money to fix her up, fit her out? You mean I can't raise money for a whaling voyage here, in this town? We're the whaling capital of the whole blamed world. Well, maybe we used to be. What do you mean, used to be? Well, son, I've been patiently trying to tell you the days of the whaling trade are over. Not for me. I guess we don't have anything more to talk about, do we? It's hard for you, know. You, you've been through a bad time in the war and all. Now you come home. Ain't the same home you left. It sure isn't. Mr. Fallowfield, I can't say it's been a pleasure. Good day to you. Uh, Noah, uh, uh, let, me, let me give you a piece of advice. Free of charge, I hope. The world goes on, son. And when something better, cheaper, easier comes along... You make sure you get aboard. Otherwise, you know what's going to happen to you? You're going to get left. Thank you, Mr. Fallowfield. What'd you do with the bottle, landlady? No, ain't you had enough. Yes, I had enough. But that's no reason to stop, is it? Well, this won't cure what ails you. Since when, Mrs. Pulford, are you giving temperance lectures? If you disapprove of the demon rum, why do you sell it? As the thing is, I'm used to selling to grown men. Not to little boys. I ain't dry behind the ears. I was decorated by Admiral David Glasgow Farragut himself. It isn't generally known his middle name's Glasgow. Uh, Noah. He's of Scottish ancestry, I believe. Uh, Noah, listen. You think it means anything to people in this town? No, that's just I what I want. 15 cents. No. On a business proposition that can't fail, that simply cannot fail. What you have to realize, Noah, is that... See, I know where the whales are. I know how to get them. But I can't raise 15 cents. For all I got the highest decoration this government can give a man. Are you through feeling sorry for yourself? Who's feeling sorry for You him? are. You feel your country don't appreciate what you did. It sure doesn't. Of course not. That's the way it goes. Nothing's too good for the boys when they leave for the war. But nothing's too bad for them when they come home. And that's right. No! But you ain't gonna sit here and drink it right, neither. Truth is, everybody's sick of the war, and everybody in it. Just wanna forget. I know a certain girl who managed to forget. Mrs. Pulfat. What did she see in him anyhow? Now, don't be too hard on her, Noah. It's like you see in the theater. Her dad's business come upon hard times, and this George Marcy's got all kinds of money. And what am I supposed to do now? Find something. What? Whalen's gone busted. Oh, and good riddance. How can you say that? 
It's been the bread and butter of this town. It's been the bread of shame. Maybe now we can find a cargo that's proper and decent. Mrs. Pulford, have you been sampling too much of your own refreshment? And for once to have our ships engaged in the trade that ain't based on the misery of helpless creatures. I wish I knew what you were talking about. Oh, them magnificent living creatures, them beautiful animals. Children of God, just like you and me. Who gave us the right to slaughter them? Oh, now, well, after all, Mrs. Pulford... You come upon this unsuspecting animal and you jam a harpoon into him. And then you wait for him to flash himself to death. And then you just strip him. Well, now, I notice you were in a corset, Mrs. Pulford, and it's made of baleen, the bone in a whale's mouth. What will you ladies do? We'll now? learn to do without... But ain't worth the suffering of an innocent animal. Ah, I don't know if, now strictly speaking, a whale suffers. They don't have feelings. Well, that's what you tell yourself to satisfy your conscience. Oh, we had to kill them. Why? For oil. Oil to light the lamps of the world. Well, you don't have to kill them no more. You don't need whale oil. Oh, who says we don't? Because now you got petroleum. Did anyone say Petroleum. Has someone uttered that abomination? Petroleum, a witch's brew for the satanic rebels, created by the tools of the devil himself. Fire and smoke. At night, the tortured fields of Pennsylvania are made bright as day by the raging flames of hell. Now, that's enough, Satan. Enough for you, madam. But I speak for the hundreds, the thousands of seafaring men. Whose livelihood has Peyton, been... you be quiet. Or you just get out. Have a glass with me, Mr. Peyton. Here. Oh, the two of you. Oh, you'll make a fine pair. Why? What nonsense. Uh, has she been filling your head with Noah? Oh, nothing much. About the whales. The poor, innocent whales. Yeah, well, Noah, my boy... Every creature was placed on this earth by God. Is that true? Yes. And every creature has its appointed task and function. True. Now, if God didn't intend for us to use the oil of the whale, why did he give the whale so much of it? You see, boy, we were only doing the Lord's work by taking the whales. Well, those days are over. Who says so? Everybody. Who's everybody? Them fat-bellied profiteers who stayed home while you and me half bled to death in combat? Well, I, I didn't bleed much. And from what I see, you look pretty healthy, too. I'm not near as healthy as a fellow named George Marcy, who married a girl that I believe was your fiancée. Mrs. Payton, what you say is true. But still in all, there's nothing we can do about it. Oh, yes, there is. There's a great deal we can do about it. Really? Tell me. Well, now, Noah, I can't tell you here. Why not? And I can't tell you at all. Unless you swear on your life not to breathe a word of it. What is that supposed to mean? It means that there are men who just aren't willing to sit around in grog shops and drown their sorrows. It means that there are men who are willing to fight. Fight? How? Against what? Fight to the death against this devil's brew, this petroleum. Now, you want to join us? Noah Arkwright looked forward to the end of the war, to a cessation of the fighting. And here, he's offered a brand new battle against a completely different foe. We'll see just what this new type of warfare consists of and uh, whether or not Noah decides to enlist when I return with Act Two. You can't stop the wheels of progress, or so they say, but you can throw a monkey wrench into them, or more accurately, a shoe, which is what working people in France tried to do more than a hundred years ago when they were losing their jobs to machines. They tossed their wooden shoes, their sabots, from which we get the word sabotage. But 
What can you do to petroleum? Join in what, Mr. Payton? Join us in fighting for your job. And the job of every wearing man in this town. And all along the coast. We're all brothers. That's good talk, but no hot facts. Uh, let's get out of here. Where are we going? To a meeting. What kind of a meeting? A meeting of good fellows who believe the way we do. How do you know what I believe? Now, you're an honest man, Noah. <laughs> Which means you have to believe our way. I see. You see who's here? Men you grew up with, men you sailed with, men you went to war with. What is everybody doing here? Assembled on the beach? Because it's a symbol, Noah. It's where we are. On the beach. Out of work. Unemployed, starving. And why? Petroleum. Men! Men! Let's begin the meeting. I see twice as many men here tonight as last week. That's because each of us must have kept his promise to bring another brother. I brought mine. He's well known to all of you. Noah Arkwright, first mate of the Betty Lee when she was a whaler. All right, boys, all right, boys, boys, hold it down, hold it down now. Noah, for you and all the newcomers tonight, let me explain why we are organized. We're out to restore our profession. Now, you keep saying that. But how? By destroying petroleum. How? Hold it, boys, hold it, hold it. We're going to fight it every way we know, with everything we've got. Now, there are rumors. A ship is going to sail from here to the port of Philadelphia and bring back a cargo of petroleum. Are we going to let them land it? No! No! But, but how are you going to stop it? Jump it overboard! Oh, you can't do that. Who says so? It's against the law. And we have no right to break the law. Yeah. That's how cowards talk. You men, you all know me. Listen, the law was what all of us were fighting to uphold all the time we were in the war. It's not our law. Uh, This this petroleum, who knows anything about it? How much there is? Now, we know whale oil's better. We know people have to come to their senses sooner or later. Are you for us or against us? I'm going back to town. All right, Noah, go ahead. Crawl back to town on your belly. Beg somebody for a job. Plead on bended knee. We don't need you here. This is a place for men. Well, I hear you didn't go along with the boys last night, Noah. I don't know what you're talking about, Mrs. Pulford. About dumping petroleum in the harbor. And here I thought it was a secret. Oh, how can you have a secret and nobody knows how to keep his mouth shut? I don't think it will ever happen. You don't? No. Just angry men letting off steam. Desperate men, Noah. You ain't been home long enough. Is... Is that why she married him? Because her father needed money. Oh, I see. That's what's bothering you. Oh, I suppose. Anyhow, it's a story around town. So you should be getting over her. Sure. How? Find yourself another gal. Plenty of good-looking young ladies around. Some of them rich, too. Leading the idle life of a rich man's son-in-law has no chance for me, Mrs. Pulford. Well, who says you have to be idle? You could get a berth on a ship. Where? Almost anywhere. It's a steamship. Oh, no. Are you going to be like the rest of these fellows? Too proud to go on anything but sail? Sail's the only way. But how can you say that? You were on a steam battleship. Oh, but steam can never replace sail for the merchant navy. Why not? It's not practical. You've got to carry so much coal to feed those engines. you got almost no room left for cargo. Oh, for no, I've heard it all. Steam ain't practical. But all you won't work. A mast and a sail and the oil of a whale. Is that all there is for you? Whales. You've got to understand, Mrs. Pulford. Whaling's been my whole life. Oh, son. A lot of people have misspent lives. But suddenly it happens. 
one day, without a word of warning, and just out of nowhere, they see the light. You see, it's you and five men in a small boat, and you steal up to him. So quiet. You hold your breath, because he's the biggest living thing in the world. Proud of yourselves, huh? You come at him from behind. Oh, that's showing real courage. And when you're within starting distance, say maybe 17 feet, you throw that iron. Why are you so excited? It's like sticking a pig. He's hooked. And now he's out of the water. He's in the air, all of him, like a mortar shell. Straight up and straight down again. And now the water is boiling as he swims and plunges this way and that, trying in vain to shake up the iron. And all you boys are really enjoying yourselves. And now he shoots straight ahead, pulling us along with him. It seems like you're speeding across that water faster than the speediest railroad train. And, and... And what? Oh, nothing. Nothing. How can a man give it up? Are you all right, Noah? Yes. Yes, uh, I'm fine. I I guess I, I'm, I'm just tired, that's all. I guess I'm just tired. Good night, Mrs. Pulford. The Betty Lee didn't ask. We spin it around. We're at the way. And where they are, Babylon's door. And man, the way you boat. Steady, boys. Hold her very steady. Look, Noah. All around you. Hundreds of whales. Thousands of whales. Oh, didn't I tell you, Mr. Telefield? You told me right all that. Well, and all of them the right way. Well, whose bodies are thick and rich with oil. Oh, start killing Start killing Now, now, Noah. Throw the lane. Now. Noah. Noah, what's wrong? Why are you just standing there, Noah? Oh, your eyes. Throw it. Kill him. Kill him. I, I, what's wrong? I can't. What are you saying, boy? He's got a look in his eyes. His eyes. You can't see a whale's eyes. I see the look in his eyes. And I can't kill him. Throw that lane. Yeah, before we, before we lose him. Look at him. Oh, Lord. Just look at this magnificent creature. How can we kill him? No, boy. Why should we kill him? Fire, you fool. No more. No, we want to kill him. He thinks we're friends. Look. He lets us come close. He trusts us. Well, if you won't hold that lens, step aside with me. And we are. We kill no more well. Hand me that iron. Never. Men. We're going to have to subdue him. He's gone crazy. And tell me, all of you men, your share of the oil, your wages, is he going to take it all from you? Don't any men try to... Look out! We're too close! The whale! We're too close! Look out, Phil! He's going to kill us with that tag! He'll be quiet! He won't stand from down! Have him with our land! Be quiet! Look out. Look out, you cool. Noah? Noah? Yeah. Eyes. I never saw the eyes of a whale before. Noah! What? Huh? What? I must have fallen yeah. asleep. Who's there? Yeah. It's me, Mrs. Pulford. Oh, well, come in. The door's open. Well, what's the matter in here, Noah? The matter? You've been yelling and screaming something fierce. All my other boarders have been complaining. Oh, I, I, I must have been dreaming. Oh, some dream. Noah, are you sure nothing happened to you during the war? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. The doctors all said so. The shrapnel just grazed my skull, that's all. It knocked me cold at the time, but I'm all right now. Well, you look different. How? Well, I can't say exactly, but something seems to be gone from your face. What? Well, I don't know what. Maybe you don't look so angry anymore. Angry? Oh, you've been looking like you're mad at the whole world since you come back. Well, I had a right. Oh, you look different. Do you feel different? Do I feel different? Yes. Yes, I guess maybe I do. 
I can't keep going being mad at the world forever. Maybe, maybe going after whales is all part of a past that's dead and gone. A past I'd better forget. Well, I'd best start thinking of things to do and stop thinking of things to hate. Oh, good. good. Oh, oh, I knew I had something to tell you. The sheriff's downstairs in the tavern. He wants to talk to you. Now, why would the sheriff want to talk to me? Well, why don't you ask him? What's on your mind, Sheriff? You're on my mind, young fella. Am I? Why? You know why. I'm here to warn you. Warn me about what? You and the rest of them. Warn me about what? I'll have the bunch of you in jail so fast. For doing what? Nobody breaks the law in this town while I'm the sheriff. What law have I broken? The one you're going to break. You attempt violence against the cargo of any ship in this harbor. What and... right do you have to accuse me? I'm wise to you, to all of you. Riffraff like you. Riffraff? Is that what we are? Drunken, brawling, lazy. Sheriff, you get out of here. I'm warning you, young fella. You and the rest of them hooligans, mind your step. Now, Noah. I should have knocked him down. Noah, don't listen to him. Why not? He's only saying what most folk think. That all of us, all of us are riffraff hooligans. What was it all for? Why did we fight so hard and so long? Oh, we should have let Johnny Reb just take over. Noah, you know you don't mean that. Don't I? Now, this two-bit pint-sized monkey thinks he can lord it over everybody because he has a tin badge. I've been pushed around long enough. Folks here think I'm a troublemaker. I'll give him something to think about. It's Peyton here. Peyton! You around? Jim! Harry, Bob! Any of you young fellas seen Peyton? You tell him I'm looking for him. Tell him I'm sold. <laughs> And that's how it is when one is five and twenty. The ideas are bright and vivid, but they spring from the heart and not the head. Quick to anger, violent of temper, and eager to love or to quarrel, whichever presents itself. And so it appears that Noah has chosen sides. How the fight comes out will be detailed when I shall return with Act Three. stumbles along in its own seemingly aimless fashion, despite our best efforts to turn it in our own direction. And each of us has to take what he is given, even if for some it's manifestly unfair. But here and there, some of us try to fight back. And when we lose the impossible war, we're considered crazy. But the rare few who win, those are the heroes. The question is... How will Noah Arkwright end up? Who's there? Well... Hello, Noah. Look who this is. Prudence. Mrs. Prudence Marcy. Or should I say, Mrs. George Marcy. May I come in? May I come in? And for what purpose? Is it the usual reason a lady visits a gentleman in his room very late at night? Please, Noah. I, I came here to... Yes? I, I know you must hate me. I can't say I'm filled with admiration for you, exactly. I, I, I know how difficult things are for you just now. Do you? I know how many sailors are idle. Oh, well, the fortunes of war. I've come to offer you a job. As what? A groom in your stables? My husband has picked up the Betty Lee. Oh, is he going into the whale oil business? George wants to send the Betty Lee to the port of Philadelphia to pick up petroleum. Is that a fact? Whale oil, petroleum, what, what difference should it make? It's, it's oil, it burns, it, it lights. And what is this supposed to mean to me? Well, you should be captain of that ship, the Betty Lee. Nobody knows her better than you do. You want me to be captain of the Betty Lee. And thus, in one sweep, you do a good turn to your husband... And your fiancé? Noah, I'm trying to help. And where are my feelings? I'm a wailing man. It's in my blood. It's in my bones. 
Do you think I'd help destroy my own profession, betray my own comrades? No, it's over. Can't you see it? The Betty V will need the best skipper for this voyage, and that's you, Noah. The world goes on. People do the best they can. You, you, you can live in the past, or you can adjust to the future. A very pretty speech. Oh, go ahead. Spend the rest of your life feeling sorry for yourself. I thought I could help you. I see I was foolish. Goodbye, Noah. How do you like that? I'm wrong. Well, I told her, Peyton. Oh, yes, I told her. Now, hold on there, Noah. Oh, yes. They want to fill those ships with that filthy mud that seeps up out of the swamps of Pennsylvania. But there's something they forgot. Who, huh? Who's going to sail those ships? We are. Yeah, they need us. Without us, nothing moves. What did you say? I said, we're going to sail the Betty Lee, Noah. We're going to cut our own throat? Oh, no. You have to think right, boy. We want to make sure the Betty Lee gets to Philadelphia. Loads on them barrels of petroleum and comes back to this very same port. Why? So we can have a party. What party? <laughs> the grand, glorious petroleum oil party, right in this harbor. The grand, glorious petroleum oil party? Why, Noah, we'll become another Boston. Yes, they'll think they whipped us. But we'll bring back that petroleum and throw it in their faces. And all you have to do is become the master of the Betty Lee. And sign on all the boys as my crew. Oh. Evening, Miss Marcy. What? What do you want, Noah? Why, what's happened to good manners since I've been gone? It used to be folks in this town answer the door and say, Why, come in, sit a spell. No, please, no trouble. Who's at the door, Prudence? Oh. What do you want? I see bad manners are catching. Prudence. Why don't you serve us up a cup of tea? Sir, sir, you can't barge into my house and I order... knocked at the door very politely and was admitted by the lady herself. Now to business. I'm not interested. I must ask you to leave this house. You're talking like a fool. What? Believe me, I know. I used to be a fool myself. You bought the Betty Lee. Who knows it better than I do? Who could be a better skipper for her? Than me. I didn't buy her to make a whaler out of her. What's it to me what kind of oil she carries? There are scores, hundreds of out-of-work captains who need you. Ask anybody in town. I'm the best captain you could hope to find for the Betty Lee. It's true. I don't like you. You don't like me. But what should that have to do with anything? Business is business. You know, I like the way you think. <laughs> More coffee, Noah. Oh, I'd better call you Captain Noah. Oh, no, thank you, Mrs. Pulford. Mm. It'll be the better part of three weeks before I have this good a breakfast again. <laughs> uh, Noah, something's going on. Ma'am? Why did hotheads like Peyton and them sign on the Betty Lee? Because they need work. After the way they've been talking about petroleum oil? A man talks one way when his belly's empty, and another when he sees a chance to have it full. Well, I don't like it. Is that not pleasing you, Mrs. Pulsford? You keep arguing with me day and night to accept reality, and then when I do... I say there's something going on. Well, why? I can see Peyton and his like changing their minds overnight, but not you, Noah. You got convictions that run deep. I know how you feel about Whalen. Well, maybe you succeeded in talking some sense into me, after all. <laughs> Hold her steady. Steady as she goes, Captain. Let this wind keep favorable. And we can have our cargo back in port day after tomorrow. Aye, in port. But not in town. <laughs> the day after tomorrow, the 5th of June, 1866. A famous date in history. The grand and glorious petroleum oil party. <laughs> the whole town will be there to watch us come into the harbor. But instead of tying up to the dock... We drop anchor in the middle of the harbor and stop the facility, eh? <laughs> Why, Noah, you're looking serious. So, 
serious. It's just, well, I don't hold with violence. Violence? Man, you had four years of war. Now, that was different. What's a man to do, Noah? What's a man to do? Now, you're right, Pete. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> what a body that's going to be! Where is she? Where's that ship? She was two hours ago. Now, George, they say there was a storm down along the coast, south of here. I... Perhaps I should never have given him the ship. I... George, he is the most qualified. Prue, is, is that why you wanted me to make him the captain? Yes, George. Is it the only reason? Is it, Putin? Yes. You... You were in love with him. Oh, that was during another time, another life. Uh, then you admit... Well, that you... life died. It was killed by the war the way so many others were. See, we can't have the things that were. We can only have the things that are. Look at it. Look at it, folks. Oh, it's the Betty Lee. The Betty Lee. <laughs> After the party. <laughs> what happened after the Boston Tea Party? The boys all became heroes. Oh, I wish it were that simple. Peyton, look. Look to the starboard. Why? Look. Am I dreaming? What do you see? Well, I... Oh, it is possible. It's a whale. But it... It can't be a whale. It can't. But look at him. Look at him spout. It's a sign. A sign sent to us from above on this day. The great and grand and glorious Petroleum Party Day. Yes. Yes, it is a sign. A sign that says, look. Look at this wonderful creature. Now he can live. Now you don't need to kill him anymore because you've been given oil from the ground. Oh, no, 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 boy. What are you saying? Now, you heard what I said. It's a sign. That whale, he's going home. To live his life in peace. What we've gotten hold of this ship is what we will use for oil from now on. You crazy? Whaling is your whole life. That life died, killed by the war. What's going after? Whales is the life of gone. Hey, we can't have the thing that was. Only the thing that is. The whale was. Petroleum is. You backing down? No. I'm standing up. Standing up to the truth. Drop anchor. I forbid it. Man, he's a traitor. He's gone back on his word. I'm captain of this ship. He wants to betray us. I want to save. Now don't you listen to him. Men, men. You saw that one whale. But look. Look beneath you in the hold of the ship. Hundreds of barrels of oil. It just came out of the ground. It never stops. It's oil. It burns. It lights. It lights the lamps of the devil. Let's get that cargo overboard. You will obey orders. Not from Tatars. I'm in command. No more. We're taking over the ship. Do any of your men want to mutiny? Do any of you want to hang? Don't listen to our men. He sold us out. Come on. Let's tie him up, boy. I'll shoot the first man who raises a hand against me. What are we waiting for? He's all by himself. Am I? Jim. Bobby. Harry. You've got more sense. All right, boys. Let's rush him. Oh, 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 oh. No, no, I didn't mean it. I just wanted, I just wanted. Peyton, you can't do this, this crazy thing. You know you can. Oh, boy, are you all right? All right, some of you men, let's get him below. No, 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 I might as well stay here. We didn't want anyone to get, to get hurt, no. No one was supposed to get hurt. Someone always gets hurt when grown men act so crazy. You can't fight it. You can't fight progress. Fight that stuff that we got in the hold. You can't do it. You go on and you do the best you can. Oh, you'll be all right now. You, you'll be all right, boy. You... No, I don't want anyone to get into trouble. How it happened? Well, just, just say that we were firing off our pistols to celebrate. And... We had an accident. No, no, no. We'll get you to a doctor. Peyton. Ah, she blows. Oh, you see him, Peyton. 
Oh, she's a beauty. The biggest, rightest whale in the world. Why are we sitting here? Why don't we man the whale boat? Payton. tragic accident, but perhaps it served to place things in the proper perspective. How stubbornly we cling to the past, to yesterday, to the known, the tried, and the true. And then suddenly, what we have treasured so highly appears to us as only an illusion, and the bubble bursts. And we have moved away from yesterday into today, where we are already preparing to resist tomorrow. I'll be back shortly. It's becoming a blander world, isn't it? At one time, a man's job, his work, his quest for his daily bread provided him with all the excitement and action he needed. Hunter, trapper, stage driver, river pilot, Well, we do make progress, don't we? We push pencils and press buttons for the most part. And it's more efficient. You simply cannot prevent progress. But uh, what to do for excitement? We can fill that particular void in your life seven times each week. Our cast included Christopher Tabori, Russell Horton, Ian Martin, and Joan Shea. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.